also a cop in the parking lot, so I feel kind of stressed. I like don't want to do anything weird. And this felt just devastating junk piles. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think if I didn't go, I would have been tortured by the idea of, of it being there and wanting to go see it. But I think I kind of missed the boat. It was like a little too late. So that's that. Or only a tangent. Where are we going to? Should I let it ride or quickly abandon myself? Oh, and I want to like touch the ground and like touch the land and and kind of be there and kind of feel like my family was there with me. And I think not being able to get out really. It like kind of threw a wrench in that. Like when I come down here to Natchitoches, on some weird subconscious level, I think I expect like Lola and her family to be here. I, you spend a lot of time like with people, researching their lives and knowing everything that you can about them, and you start to feel like you really know them. And when they're family, it just makes that that bond a lot stronger. So I I think I've been just working through this idea like they're not here. Um, so we're here. And we just drove by the property, but we're gonna drive by slow, but we, we can't get out and walk. So we're kind of like, we like drove down the road, we pulled into like a church or something. Also a cop in the parking lot, so I feel kind of stressed. I like don't wanna do anything weird. Get out of the car, but I don't know if we're allowed in the cemetery. So I was hoping to like be there and just feel connected to this person, to uh, my fifth grade grandfather, Noel, and feel connected to him there and our story there. And I feel like I didn't really get a chance to do that. But I guess the reality is, like, he's not there. And even in life, he left. Maybe it's, like, a little too romantic. I don't know. I can see that the guy lives right next door and it has a bunch of stuff. And I know that he doesn't want us there. And so I don't want there to be a problem. And there's a cop behind us in the parking lot. You feel that? <laughs> feel terrible about it. <laughs> um... I don't feel like I have a right to feel really terrible about it because one, I knew there was no house there and two, I knew I wasn't getting out of the car to do anything. I think there's a difference between remembering what something was probably like a long time ago and that's the only that's the only experience I've had is the historical part of this, not like modern day. So, so I'm bringing that this historical focus on like my ancestors and I'm bringing that to whatever's like, the reality that's there right now and the reality that's there right now is really far removed from that history so in some ways I didn't have any feelings at all about it but I think part of it is because I knew I couldn't get out I just had to just be like like there it is like it felt real weird to be like let's drive by it I don't know what kind of action motion and traction that is just kind we of drive-by for us and I don't know it's kind of weird but I'm gonna turn this around Onward, upward, train to move forward, but all that ends with you. suspended mid-sentence standstills and fences I gotta look forward to anyway it didn't have the feeling that I was hoping it would have and it felt kind of depressing and gross and forgotten. The whole thing feels forgotten. I won't be happy on the Z axis. I won't be happy on the Z axis. It's weird because it kind of, it doesn't, the, it doesn't have the feeling I wanted to fe have. I wanted to be a little bit more, I don't know, reverent isn't really the right word, but I thought it would have a little bit more of a feeling of like a sacred space in some way. Because going to Melrose and seeing how beautiful it is and well manicured and maintained and, and cared for it, keep people care about the history. And it's just like kind of weird to have these two places. These are former plantations where family has ties to both of them. Like you show up to Melrose and, and people care about it and they they were like speaking tenderly about it. And then you drive 11 minutes down the road, no one could care any less. I'm just thinking about how I wanted it to be what I wanted, but I was telling my husband Daniel, who's driving, 
is I wanted it to be like we show up there and it's like a beautiful little park. I mean, I knew it wasn't gonna be like this, but in my mind, what it should be is you're, you're right next to the river, you walk up a path, you walk through the gate and and there's, there's some benches and there's a sign kind of telling the true history of the place and a place to just sit quietly, right? And the reality is uh, that it was gross. To me, they're very much alive and I feel very connected to them. But at the same time, like these are people that I will never talk to. I'll never meet them, at least in this way here. If you're doing genealogy on your family, I do. I feel like you feel that acutely. Like you're you're meant to be able to be connected to this these family, and not just your like immediate nuclear family, but all these people that come before you. You have a connection to them. I think when you start doing genealogy, you recognize that, and inherently. And so it feels strange to come to a place where you know all these people lived and they were living. I think if I didn't go, I would have been tortured by the idea of of it being there and wanting to go see it, but I think I kind of missed the boat. I think if I had gone 10 years ago, actually it probably had to be more than 10 years ago, while the house was still there and it was a museum, I think it would have been better. But now I just feel like you just see how fast like history gets forgotten and stuff's gone, it's over. Like no one's gonna walk past that property now. And when the house was there, my family wasn't really being remembered, but now no one will. Like that, it, it's almost like it's gone now. And I guess it's just kind of shocking how fast history can be lost if we don't preserve it. If we don't know about it first, we have to know about it and then preserve it. It was like a little too late, so it's sad. Um, I think the contrast to Melrose was really shocking because Melrose was beautiful and this fell with this devastating junk piles. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a part of the ancestry genealogy stuff that I didn't expect and I don't really like it. Um, and maybe there's like a desire to go to these places to connect with these people and feel, feel their, them a little bit. Uh, not in like a hocus pocus way, but just knowing they looked at these same, some of these same places that I'm looking at now. I think a big disappointment about the land that was the plantation, I, I guess I was relying a lot on the tangible part of that, of like being able to touch the ground, walk around, look at it from that perspective and not having to have that enough. But I wish I had better things to say because I, I feel like this is important. You yeah, have been looking at it the wrong way because this, this you know, fifth grade grandfather, like he, yeah, he was enslaved there and yeah, he probably built that plantation house that's gone now, but he also got like either 40 or 70 acres in Natchitoches Parish when he was a free man. And he moved on from that location. So I don't know, maybe I can't, I can't too.